if you're a New Orleans Saints fan and you often think, man, I just wish I could get more content, more coverage around the New Orleans Saints because, hey, ESPN doesn't really talk about them, Fox Sports, CBS, none of these guys take the time to discuss the black and gold. Well, I'm here to tell you, you found your place. So if this statement right here describes you, be sure to hit the big red sub button for free Saints coverage. Videos almost every single day, multiple live shows a week, and a whole lot more. Trust me, you won't want to miss a video. So in case you missed it, Drew Brees, uh, he actually got the opportunity to get back into the broadcast booth, and not really the booth, but join the ESPN broadcast on Monday Night Football Count and the pregame show leading up to this week's Monday Night Football game. And he had some pretty interesting things to say. He added some context about some things that have kind of been taken over the league by storm. And so just to add some context, so that way we're all on the same page and you can understand what I'm talking about. Let's take a trip down memory lane first. If you go back in time and you remember that awful Saints loss to the Carolina Panthers, Chris Olave suffered a concussion. Michael Thomas went on an absolute tirade. And uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty much what he had to say. It was, it was not necessarily all that good. So he went on, just listed a bunch of stuff. First thing he said was, Derek Carr for you. I've told, I been told y'all shit sad with uh, one of these fingers going up. And then he said, dude, scary and panic. Just throw a ball. Get him the F out of here. He's so ass. The, uh, that year, his buddy went first team all pro. He's talking about Devontae Adams. He needed 180 targets just to reach 100 patches or catch 100 passes. He is ass on my granny. That is wild. And then, you know, saying dude tried to lie on him whenever they made Chris Olave the wide receiver. Long story short, Michael Thomas went on an all-time rant, an all-time tirade. And, uh, yeah, it kind of took the league by storm. And in case you didn't know, this actually isn't the first time this has happened. It's actually not even the second time. This is something that happens. Not often, but, it, you know, it's pretty regular at this point to hear Michael Thomas say something about Derek Carr. And I'm not here to defend Derek Carr. I'm not here to defend Michael Thomas, but I'm here to just tell you what's been going on. And if you go back in time even further to last year, February, March-ish, um, Michael Thomas was, you know, getting recruited by Chiefs fans on social media. This is real. If you don't believe me, go look it up on social media yourself. I'm telling you this happened. Michael Thomas did reply to a fan and saying, well, if I didn't get set up by a bad ball, I probably would have had a light little 1,000 yard year or 1,000 yards this year, but could have, should have, I guess. I get it. LOL. So long story short, that goes back to Michael Thomas getting hurt when he was with the Saints and, you know, he thinks he could have been a lot more productive. But I just got to say this again. I'm not here to defend either of these players. I'm not here to really criticize either of these players. We've seen what Derek Carr is. He is who he is. We've seen what Michael Thomas is. He is who he is. And I like who Michael Thomas is. I like who Derek Carr is, both as men. I like how they are as individuals. I like how they are as human beings. But at the end of the day, they do not work together on a football field very well. That's very apparent. But Michael Thomas quite literally never did this to Drew Brees. And I'm a fan of Michael Thomas. I'm a fan of number 13. He's one of my favorite players as a Saints fan. He was so good at his time in New Orleans before all the injuries derailed his career. Derek Carr, I respect him as a man. He is a fine quarterback. He's a good leader. He's a good individual. But when it comes down to it, it's just a testament to who Drew Brees is. And, you know, I put this post out on social media last night. I'm not, it's not like halfway kidding whatsoever. It's truly like, I want to have Michael Thomas on the show, but I didn't expect it to get the traction it has. Almost fifth, over 15,000 views on social media, almost 300 likes on X. I mean, look, I'm trying to get Michael Thomas to join the show for an interview. We can zoom him in. We can have him into the show. We can bring him into the studio. I don't care. I want to interview Michael Thomas. I want to ask him about the Saints. I want to talk to him just ball, you know. I just want to pick his brain and see what he has to say. 100% open invitation to you, Michael Thomas, for an uncut, uncensored, unfiltered interview so let's get something on the books my friend feel free to hit me up let's get something ready for the day yeah, yeah, let's just get something let, let, let's get an interview going let's give saints fans what they want so help me out who that nation if you want michael thomas to join the show i'm gonna post a clip of me trying to get michael thomas here to the show on social media so i'm hoping he sees the video and if he sees the video i want to see the comments flooded with mts 
So get down in the comment section. If you want to get Michael Thomas to join the program for an interview, comment MT. It would be my first professional interview. It would be a really, really cool opportunity for me, and I think you guys would really enjoy the content as well. So let's get him on the show. Now coming up on the program, I'm going to kind of tie all of this together. Where does Drew Brees and Michael Thomas's to social media ran and Derek Carr, how does this all come together? I'm going to tell you in just one second. But first, I got to give a big time shout out and say thank you to Public Rec for sponsoring today's show. I know y'all were watching this video thinking, dang, Trace, that shirt looks good. You look like such a stud. And hey, I feel like a stud. And I can tell you, Maddie loves it too. And I got this shirt from Public Rec, and you can get the same one if you go to publicrec.com. You get actually 20% off your order if you use code CHAT20. Now, let's be real, guys. Wearing pants sucks. So who decided that stiff, uncomfortable fabric digging into your family jewels was necessary to go out and look put together? Well, I'm here to tell you that those days are finally over. Like I said a minute ago, for a limited time only, our listeners will get 20% off their entire order when you use code CHAT20 at publicrec.com. That's 20% off your order at publicrec.com with promo code CHAT20. And look, the holidays are coming up. They're right around the corner. And I know, fellas, you need something to wear if you got an important dinner, if you got to go to church, if you got a hot date or, you know, whatever. I got you covered. 20% off. Go use the link in the comments and description of this video. Public Rec, it's so comfortable. It's stretchy. The fabric is awesome. Maddie, my girlfriend, she absolutely loves when I wear it. And look, I'm pairing it right now with some black jeans that I absolutely hate wearing. I wish I could have worn my Public Rec pants, but hey, they're a little dirty, so can't wear the same pair of pants twice in a row, I guess. But hey, I'm here to tell you, it looks good, it feels good, and you can get some too at publicrec.com. Make sure you use code CHAT20. Stop the suffering in regular pants like I am right this moment. For a limited time, our listeners can get 20% off when you use code CHAT20 at checkout. Reminder, that's 20% off with the code CHAT20 at publicrec.com. After you purchase your products, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Say goodbye to pants that put up a fight. Because when comfort meets style, you found Public Rec. It's a perfect gift for the holiday season. It's a perfect uh, piece of clothing to wear during the holiday season. Trust me right now. Go get started with the link in the comments and description of this video. All right, so now let's get to it. Drew Brees discussing Michael Thomas on Monday Night Football. This video was really interesting. I saw it on social media. Uh, Got to give a big time... Shout out to Drew Brees for what he had to say here because it's, it's pretty funny. So they were just kind of talking about Jalen Waddell, Tyree Kill with the Dolphins. They got a lot of players on their roster that they got to feed. That's a lot of mouths to feed. So how do they do it? And Drew added some insight and said, look, you're always thinking matchup. And you're always thinking we've got a lot of mouths to feed. How are we going to get all these guys opportunities, especially early in the game? And a lot of times... I'd come to the sideline after drive one, drive two, and I'd look at Mike Thomas and be like, hey, Mike T, stay patient, all right? They're going to be doubling you here for a while, all right? So, Young Bucks, you guys are going to have to step up. You guys are going to get the ball. You're going to get the opportunities. When we start to make them pay here, Mike T, you are going to get your opportunities. And shout out to Ferry Yvette for posting that clip on social media it's actually gotten some pretty good virality to it and taken over the internet a little bit. So shout out to her for posting it. Really interesting quotes. And in response, the Monday night crew, they were asking, so is that to Drew Brees? Is that why Mike never went around New Orleans asking people questions about you? And I mean, they didn't. They didn't. Outside of like 20 minutes of people trying to cancel Drew Brees, Really never had any controversy in New Orleans. People never really were against him. People always loved him. He resonated with the fans. He resonated with the team. He was a phenomenal leader. And I'm not here to say that Derek Carr isn't a great leader. I'm not here to say that Derek Carr isn't a good man. He has done good community work. He has done really like inspiring things like that um, night, of, uh, night of worship that he did with Demario Davis earlier in the offseason. And I just will say this, again, a testament to Drew Brees because – this never happened when he was around. And Breeze, to his point, like, got to give him credit. He handled it like a professional. Just started laughing it off. So did the crew. They all kind of just started, ah, you know, uh, 
that's pretty good, just kind of keeping it going. But then uh, Marcus Spears decided to get one last jab in there, and on the broadcast he said, Mike said, get his ass out of here, baby. Derek Carr got to go. Hang in there, D-Carr. And look, you know, I know I earlier I posed the question, did he take shots? No, I don't think he was taking shots at Derek Carr. I actually think he handled it very professionally. I think he handled it very well, and I don't think it was at all a disrespect, but it is, you know, showing the awareness of, look, Michael Thomas is a player who – wants the ball he's a player who wants opportunities is it a little selfish I don't know when you're playing really good football I don't think it is but Derek Carr couldn't make it work with Mike Thomas Drew Brees could I think it was a really good insight on a pretty valid question because a lot of these quarterbacks across the league have a lot of different mouths to feed they have tight ends running backs wide receivers right now it seems like the New Orleans Saints can't keep a mouth to feed healthy, but at this point in the season, it doesn't really matter who's at fault. It, that was last year. This is just Twitter nonsense, random ranting and whatnot, and social media clips. Like, look, I, I understand that between Derek Carr and Michael Thomas, it never worked out. It shouldn't have gone the way it did. It should have been a really good connection. It should have worked out. Michael Thomas did, you know, celebrate when Derek Carr was signed. That, that happened. It is a fact. You can go and watch, look it up. It 100% happened. But this wasn't an issue when Drew was around. So, again, just got to just so say, like, thank you and just show so much love and appreciation for Drew Brees. He held things together. He was the glue. No matter what was going on, he was running the offense well. He was a great leader. He communicated with the team, and the team listened. And, I, you know, I'm not here to say that the locker room in New Orleans has been lost. Clearly, they were not necessarily massive fans of Dennis Allen. Derek Carr is one of the few people in the organization still talking about Dennis Allen, but <sighs> Drew Brees never had this happen. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. So I also just want to give a big-time shout-out to Drew. Like He did a phenomenal job on Monday Night Football Countdown. Like Go watch it. It was a really, really good stuff. He, had, he was well-spoken. He had some really good thoughts. Like you know, I, I think that his broadcasting career got cut very short and very unfairly. Like, I think he was pretty good. Like, he knows a lot of ball. He's very well-spoken, and he's an entertaining guy. And, like, that's not me being biased. That's just me being, like, somebody who objectively likes football and wants to see what experts have to say. What more expert to talk about how to manage an offense and how to be a good quarterback and to be a good leader than the most accurate passer in the league, one of the all-time greatest throwers of the football, one of the all-time greatest players of the great sport of football. So, just got to give a big-time shout-out to Drew Brees. You, you crushed it. I hope to see more opportunities for you. And, hey, if you ever, uh, if you're ever looking for broadcasting, come on the show, man. I would love to have you. We could have a little fun two-man show going. I'll, I'll even produce it for you. I'll take a step back if you, this wants to be your show, Drew. I'm just kidding. Not really. Uh, uh, I don't know. Drew, come on the show, man. Mike, come on the show. But if you love Drew Brees, get down in the comment section. Type 9 because he's my goat. He should be your goat as well if you're a real Saints fan. So type 9. Love you, Drew Brees. Don't forget to subscribe, and y'all stay golden.